Today we see a great victory and triumph for Christ, but also for all of us. If our Lent has been as it should, and we have made progress spiritually, and we should be full of gratitude for these gains, see the means necessary to preserve them. Pope St. Leo the Great opens his sermon this glorious day, urging us not to waste the fruits of our fasting. We must watch, keep watch, he tells us, lest the devil steal the graces that God has given us. Today we see the bright side of suffering. Yes, it has a bright side. The victory of Lent was the battle of the will. For A good Lent gave the will to the soul. A good Easter hardens the will in the good of God. The victory is not free. It is hard won by Christ and by us. The harder we fight, the sweeter the victory. Now the battle continues, but by properly observing the seasons of the church, we grow stronger and stronger. It's kind of like coming up the very difficult part of a path, and then you reach a plateau, and you still got to keep moving, but it's not as difficult, perhaps, by the grace of God. Pope St. Leo the Great tells us this day, let not the things that were made new return to their former insecurity. Let us not jeopardize our salvation. Let no one sink back into that which from, he, from which he rose. Yes, let us rise with Christ, as Christ did. Christ rose to die no more, stood strong and firm. He did not rise to fall back. His resurrection was a true resurrection. And so it should be with us. Let us not lose the lesson, the con- connection of victory and gratitude. Christ paid the debt we could not. This gratitude must be active and fruitful, a strong fire of motivation to keep us strong in our faith. Yes, victory is assured. We have but to choose this victory. And what similarities can we see between the different stages of life, the liturgical year, and all the mysteries of the Holy Rosary? How are they similar in a certain way? In Advent, is it not a holy season of joyful expectation? Of course, Christmas is a realization of that joy, in a sense. It fills our hearts and prepares us for the future. Are not innocent and carefree infants and children often joyful? It's a joyful time of life in general, and imparting joy to others. True enough, they at times have small battles to wage. They have to practice for what's coming, training for the future combat. But it was for me, and I dare say for many or for most, a time of joy. And how fitting the rosary begins with the joyful mysteries. You see the purpose of true joy to prepare us for sorrow. Then comes the sorrows of Lent. It is a season of growth. Hard work is required, yielding maturity, fruit. There is a point to that work. And we cannot forget the joy that we have acquired, that we have learned in the first stage, in the first mysteries. That is important for us to keep us moving and looking forward also to the victory, what comes next. Adult life from young adult to middle age can be a battle, a sacrifice often. But it's important that we pray to persevere, that we Seek and use the joys that God provides even in that stage to help us. And why? Who is this not true for? Those who live in luxury. And to live in luxury is not necessary to, to have a great amount of wealth. Living in luxury is, can be simply indulgence. And indulgence, unfortunately, in our society as we've been told, is one of the richest societies in history. So indulgence is free at hand. It is no longer something that is for a select few. But see the fruits of luxury indulged. It brings weak and immature souls, weak and immature wills. 
Luxury is a way to attempt, in some way, to bypass sorrow. But without sorrow, we miss the major requirement for maturity. We miss what's necessary to cultivate that fruit and to make it grow. Maturity of mind, body, and soul. Hard work makes these strong, if done correctly, if done in union with our Blessed Mother. The Sorrowful Mysteries, what is their purpose? To perfect us in the art of perseverance and work ethic. And the Glorious Mysteries, yes, they are the victory. We see today the resurrection, the first glimpse of that. But can we coast at this point? As long as we're in this life, no. That's for when we get to heaven. When the final victory has been sealed, we can sin no more. But if we develop our maturity of mind, body, and soul, we see the victory of today, and we let that bring us the strength that we need. We might say being outside of the faith is like being stuck in the mud with both feet, and we can't move. It's dark and getting cold. Now, if we have the true faith... It's like one foot being out of that mud. We have now a chance. We can move. We can perhaps make efforts and pull ourselves from the mire. And by God's grace, as we reach spiritual maturity, indeed, that other foot comes out and we begin to walk much more easily along the path of salvation. But we have to be careful and watch our steps so that we can get stuck again. We also have to, again, come out of the mire. And the seal on the tomb, what would be the image there? Who put that there? Why did they put that there? Who wanted that? The enemies of Christ. Why? This is our proof against Christ. This is our proof that it was not true. This is our proof that we don't have to overcome ourselves. We don't have to lift the veil of blindness from our eyes. But what did Christ do? He broke through that. By the infinite power of his divinity, he broke that seal. And so we want to make sure we have part with Christ we see that seal as our own fallen nature, the image of our fallen nature, to break that seal and see therein the final victory when we persevere in that. So let's ask our Blessed Mother to share with her today her joy and impart to us the strength and hope we need for final perseverance. Jesus, meek and humble of heart.